America, it is really good if you're really, really rich. And Forbes <laughs> just released their list of the 400 billionaires. Uh, these people are worth a combined $2.3 trillion. They're doing pretty good. We're not gonna uh, read all 400 of them <laughs> for you. We're just gonna look at the top 10, and I think you're gonna know uh, most of these names. Uh, Bill Gates at the top, he is worth $81.2 billion. Warren Buffett, number two. Uh, the Koch brothers, they're four and five. The Koch brothers, by the way, they have their hands in manufacturing, trading, and investments. I know everybody's talking about them all the time, so I wanted to clarify that. And then uh, the Waltons, that seven, eight, and nine, those are the Walmart people. Uh, so three people that own, three family oh, members. Four, 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 four. six. Look at that, and four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jesus, they're multiplying like gremlins. Uh, you know, yeah, combined, they would be on top of Bill Gates. They oh yeah, their whole yeah, family is insane. They're doing insane. They're, people keep saying that Walmart's struggling right now, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah. they're, they're doing okay. And then of course, Mark Zuckerberg was at number 10. Um, so let's start with the Walmart thing, because I thought that was interesting. I missed a woman and a family there, and they're still all over that list. Um, Do you remember that story a while back where Walmart was doing a food drive on Thanksgiving for its for, own, their own employees? employees. Yes, it's we, like right there. So we covered that. Literally, they were doing a food drive for their own. Yeah, people. like put canned goods here so that I can make a Thanksgiving dinner. I work at Walmart, yeah. and I can't afford to make Thanksgiving dinner. But. You know, they're the richest people in the country combined. Okay, so what do we do about that? Because I do believe in capitalism. I don't know of a better economic system that's working. And yet you see this, and then you see those numbers which are completely insane, and the amount of money that this family has wrangled out of the economy. And then you hear stories like this where they barely are uh, paying their employees and all the bad workers' practices, and they're not allowed to unionize, and all this stuff. And I think they're the biggest employee employer in the United States. Am I making that up? Um, I'm not I, sure, but I, I it, it sounds are. believable. That's Sounds me, yeah. Okay. Um, how do we negotiate those two things, like that they can have this much money and also have their people being so I, I don't think we can, and I we think can. that's the issue. We can't negotiate um, at all. We don't have the power to do so, and we especially don't have the power to do so today compared to you know decades ago or hundreds of years ago because of legislation that's put in place that essentially says money speaks. <laughs> Citizens United. Worst <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> yeah. Supreme Court ruling ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So, so we have policies that maintain people in in power and keep others um, you know poor and unable to afford a turkey on Thanksgiving Day. It's yeah. pretty gross. I, you know, I recently watched, and I'm just going to kind of defer to Robert Reich on this because he is a, an economist he's, and he's really smart and he knows, he knows a lot more than stuff. I do. Yeah. But I recently watched the documentary based on his book called Inequality for All, which is incredible. Check it out. It's on Netflix right now. Um, and he makes a really good point, which is that people who don't understand economics often try to say that the free market decides, the free, capitalism is free, the market decides. There's no such thing as a free, free market. In any capitalist nation, there's some combination of, of capitalism and socialism, and the market is only as free as the government decides to, to regulate it. There are always going to be regulations on a free market. For example, we don't trade with Cuba, we, which we should. That's a different issue. That's but um, you know, topic, look yeah. at tariffs, for example. Look at illegal kinds of trades. We, 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 we block the black market, for example. There are a lot of regulations that we put in place, but for some reason, people like to pick and choose which ones they think of as being moral or immoral regulations. Regulations. The way that we solve this is that we have legislation in place that protects the middle class. And we have, since the 1970s, since the Reagan administration really, we have slowly but surely been stripping away protections from the middle class and propping up the richest of the rich by giving them insane tax breaks where these people, I would not be surprised if the effective tax rate that these folks were paying was close to 10% when I pay 36% taxes. Right, okay, so you got me my next like five questions. <laughs> <laughs> you hit all of them there. Um, okay, so how, so first off, how do we tax these people then? Because there they're are gajillion loopholes. They own the politicians, Citizens United. They own the very politicians that are supposed to regulate them. This is not uh, this is not truly free market, of course, because they're in charge of the people and the regulators and all that. And we find all the time that the second politicians are done, where do they get their next job? Eric Cantor. Well, he was never on Wall Street before, but got kicked out of uh, Congress, and now mm -hmm. he's making three and a half million dollars a year on Wall Street. Um, so how do we possibly figure out a way to tax these people? 
It's uh, incredibly difficult because when you figure out a way to tax these people, they figure out a yeah. way to skirt the law and to find a loophole around that tax. Um, I do have to say there have been a couple of changes more recently, and the Obama administration has tried to crack down a little bit on tax evasion. So we've seen some changes in tax inversions, and, cap and um, the capital gains tax has increased also in the last few years. So. Things like that can help, but again, right, the capital gains tax, which is just money that your money is made, yeah. so they're going to tax that a little bit higher. And again, I'm not begrudging these people money or success no. or ability to earn. It's but huge. things like that, like yes, it is a little something. Like I do want to give Obama some credit. <laughs> but where here's here's an amazing point that was made again in this documentary. There was a really rich guy who was like, "I'm fucking filthy rich. Yeah. I own this crazy company. I'm a venture capitalist. I'm crazy rich. I make billions of dollars a yeah. year." And he made this point, which had never really settled with me before, which is 80 percent of the functioning American economy economy is based on purchases of goods and services. And the way to make that boom is through the middle class. And he said this, I drive the nicest Audi you can buy. It's a really expensive Audi, but it's still just one car. I can only drive one car. I'm one person. I only buy two pillows. I make a thousand times more than my employees, but I don't buy a thousand times more pillows. I don't contribute to the economy as much as the middle class. I hoard my money the same way that all the rich people do. <laughs> Trickle down economics is a fucking myth. It just doesn't add up. Right, so for the people that believe in trickle down economics, their belief somehow is that if you have these really rich people, well then they'll want a boat, so then you have someone to make a boat, and then they'll want, um, what is another fancy thing that rich people have? A, a helicopter and a, 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 like, yacht, a yacht. A yacht is a type of boat. <laughs> it's a fancy a, boat. We'll keep this all in the water. <laughs> right, but that basically it doesn't work. Just because of the numbers, it just can't it work. It just doesn't work. And you know what you'll see in your comment section right now is that you'll see a lot of conservative people saying things like, you just don't understand economics, which yeah. is a very common kind of backlash immediate argument. But the truth is, the people who do understand economics, who do understand it way better than I do, are saying the same thing. And when it comes down to how do we close the tax loopholes, how do we, we can't do any of that until we get money out of politics. That all of these arguments come back down when you strip away the bullshit to the fact that our politicians are paid for by corporations, that the if, if I have $10 versus your $5, your, my politician is going to vote my way, not yours. Yeah. It's as simple as that. It's a pretty disgusting equation. And now apparently corporations are people and we let mm -hmm. unlimited money into the system. We do the exact reverse of what sort of rationality uh, would dictate. But uh, that's what's going on.